Today we're at the Bridger Teton National Forest here at Air Corps 5 session, the final of five sites. We're sitting down with the Chief Scout Executive, Mr. Bob Mazuka. Uh, Mr. Mazuka, if you would, uh, please describe the current state of scouting. Oh my gosh, uh, in, in, in 30 words or less, right? Sure. <laughs> Frankly, the current state of scouting is, 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 is really good in my, my, my opinion. We are poised because of a number of things, not the least of which is this Aero Core 5 project, but with the 100th anniversary approaching, this whole reinvention project that we've gone through nationally to kind of re-engage ourselves in our, in our real mission, which is to help local councils succeed, I think we're poised for some really exciting times ahead. That's not to say we don't have some challenges, and we'll talk about those in, in a little bit. But this will be the first year in um, many that we'll have a gain in membership by the end of the year, traditional membership. 51,742 Eagle Scouts last year, a record in the history of the Boy Scouts of America. So when people ask, is scouting still around or is it alive and well, and we're setting records for Eagle classes four years in a row, I'd say we're, we're, we're in, in pretty good shape. We do have some challenges and we have some issues we need to address, and I know we'll talk about those in a bit. But, uh, but in my opinion, uh, and I'm not just Pollyanna, we're, I think we're, we're in pretty good shape. Can you describe the mesh between the Order of the Arrow and the Boy Scouts of America? Oh, it's an incredible fit. You know, uh, it, I don't think it's by accident that the OA was founded just five years after scouting was founded because it's a, it's a logical extension of the aims, methods, and mission of scouting. And, you know, when you, you're, and you're looking for one more way to engage young people and take them to the next level, um, the brotherhood of cheerful service and the honor camping notion of the Order of the Arrow is a perfect fit with the overall mission of scouting, and, and I, th I think it's a perfect fit. Of course, the Order of the Arrow and the Boy Scouts have been highly involved in conservation projects in yeah. the past. Um, can you describe some of the background of Arrow Corps 5? Well, you know, I came into it kind of late. You, you were probably a year and a half into the planning already, or certainly well into the first year of planning when I came to Dallas. And I recall Brad uh, Haddock and a couple of guys, uh, Clyde, calling on me to talk to me about this project. And I had no idea what they were talking about. And they were very enthusiastic and, and uh, you know, because you were, you were way down the road in planning this thing. And I'm sitting there thinking, what is this? I have no idea what they're talking about. And so I think I was a little kind of like the Forest Service at the beginning of this thinking, oh, this will be okay. It's kind of cool. But, you know, I had no idea. The, the, the magnitude or the intensity that people had devoted to this. And so as I watched it unfold over this summer, you know, I was as enlightened as all the rest of the world about the capacity of the Order of the Arrow. I had no idea you guys were that good. Can you describe briefly the scope of this project as compared to previous conservation projects? Sure. Over, the, over our lifetime as an organization, we've been involved in conservation. We're the first tree huggers. We're the, you know, we are about our environment. But I don't think there's ever been anything, except maybe the World War II project, which I'll talk in a minute, that's had been of this magnitude, and certainly nothing that had the kind of logistics and the kind of moving parts that, that this one had, nor, nor were any of them nearly as high profile. I mean, this has served to really catapult us into the, my passion for reintroducing the American people to the Boy Scouts. I mean, what the whole world has seen, they're so proud of, and you guys have just acquitted yourselves so well and represented them so well. You know, during World War II, the scouts were, you know, front and center and collecting tires and rubber and all kinds of things for the war effort and victory gardens. And but as was the whole country, Rosie the Riveter and the Boy Scouts, and it was all part of, you know, an expectation of those days. I don't think those expectations are there these days. I think you have to find and create the initiatives to get traction on things like service. That's not nearly the passion as a people. So this is a great role model for the American people. This is certainly a great role model for the rest of scouting on the value of community service and leaving the place better than when you found it, and the capacity of the Boy Scouts of America to grow leaders like yourself. I mean, that's what we do. That's what we, and we've, you've shown this country so well over this summer that um, scouting is really important to this country. So how do you think this project takes scouting towards the 100th anniversary? I think it's a perfect launch pad. Uh, the 100th anniversary is going to be on a similar on a similar basis. We're going to want to do the same thing with the entire movement that you've done with the Order of the Arrow on this project. Raise the awareness, raise the profile, raise the energy level, um, and you've shown us how to do that. I mean, you've taken a lot of moving parts and got you got all the cats herded in the right direction, and they all ended up at the right place at the right time. And so, uh, you've kind of you are the, sort of the model that we can build our 100th anniversary celebration around. All right, changing gears a little bit, um, looking at scouting, 
What do you think that uh, we as an organization, um, what do we face during this current, during the 21st century? Lots of things. I, first of all, I think principles like um, trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, clean and reverent, the points of the scout oath and law are as relevant today as they ever were. As a matter of fact, maybe more so because there are fewer places where you can get those things. But the dynamic of the family has changed. The dynamic of how we communicate technology has taken on a whole new dimension as to where people form opinions and get their information and ideas. And we have got to learn how to access, use, and, and frankly manipulate that technology to, to position us to, for, for the current modern American young person and parent to understand how we can be helpful to them without abandoning those core values that make us so very strong, and that's the Scout Oath and the Scout Law. Um, anyway, and I think we're, we're, we're capable of doing that, but there's, we have a lot of work to do in that regard. You know, it's interesting, uh, when I was out on the trail the other day interviewing a participant, he was from Florida, and he mentioned that uh, if it was not for this project on this week of the summer, he'd be at home on the couch uh -huh. just playing a video game. So um, having an opportunity like this definitely uh, can help introduce to a, a new age of boys. You're bet. And, and, you know, no child left inside. That should be our motto. That should be our goal. And you've heard me talk many, many times about my concern about the health and well-being of young people today for those very, those very reasons. And this is a great, you know, I don't know what young person who sees the results of this and look at the grandeur around them and say, wow, I wish I could be there. I wish I could be part of that. And our objective has got to be get, get every kid off the couch and every kid out to an environment like this. There's been a lot of folks that have said, are, are we going to do something like this again? Um, and so my question would be from the Boy Scout side, uh, mm -hmm. are there any future plans to, uh, with, with this kind of building the base on a new sure. era of co conservation? Yeah. Well, I think we've learned a lot from this. I would like to see us engage in this kind of thing periodically going forward. But as I said last night to the group, I think if we were to try to do this on a routine basis, then it becomes routine and it's not special and it's not, it, it loses the luster. We shouldn't try to do an Aero Corps 5 project or similar project every year. But certainly every two or three years, some other way to raise the, raise the bar and do something high profile is, it would be, I would be certainly supportive of that. All right, on a final note, uh, what's been a personal highlight for you this week? Oh my gosh, look around. <laughs> for being in this incredible place first. I mean, I just love this part of the world and I, I haven't been here for years. So that is very, very special. And then being with all these, you know, 1,100 of the finest young people in the country, um, working, being on the trails yesterday in the back country with the projects up there and being here this morning as the guys are getting off the bus to ready to hit the Teton Pass and, and uh, bring it to its knees. and and to meet you. I mean, this is just, the whole thing has been an incredible experience. I feel a blog coming on here. <laughs> Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.